There's so many skills that I feel like I wish I learned sooner in my life because I think it would have trained me to train my children on these skills that I think are non-negotiable and are crucial for them to live a life that is peaceful and joyful and avoid overwhelm, avoid you know, being a victim to uh, what everyone else thinks of them. And so much of my journey has been building my own skill set through discipline after discipline, but it's, it's, it's been a journey and it's not, you know, there were so many skills I felt like I was given through my mentor that has uh, helped me, but there's so many more skills that I feel like I've had to continually learn that my hope is that the skills that I felt like I learned later in life, I would be able to give to my children sooner in life so that it would help them to make better choices. It would help them to find quality friendship. It would help them protect their mind, body, spirit, and it would help them give emotional command, or it would help them make decisions in life. And I think that my hope as a mom is to save them years and tears, years of not knowing, you know, how to, um, make decisions and tears, making bad decisions. So I want to share with you just what this journey looks like for me as a mother of eight children and knowing that I don't have all the skills I wish I could give them, but I'm still working really intentionally on in giving them the skills that I think are crucial for them. They're not, you know, luxury skills. These are skills that if they do not have, they are going to suffer for life. So I'm just going to give you the seven skills that I give my daughter to avoid overwhelm. I have four daughters and four sons. Now I don't necessarily think that these are skills that our daughters or our sons don't need. I think that they are uh, essentially the same things. It's just that I think our daughters take a little bit of a different way of delivering it to them and perhaps there's a little bit tweaked. So I'm just going to focus specifically on daughters. Now I have a pre, I have a couple of preteens. I have a a uh, 13 year old in a couple of weeks and have an 11 year old. So I'm right in the heart of it. And I think that um, I'm training my six year old and my seven year old, my almost six year old, my seven year old, some of these skills in context of their age. But the main thing I tell mothers is that you cannot give what you do not have, which means that if you're unaware of the skills you need to uh, to give you um, to, to provide that quality of life that is not steeped in overwhelm, that is not um, you know constant mental exhaustion, that has uh, consistent capacity for generosity and contribution. It's hard to train our children in something we are ill-equipped in. It's it's really vital that we model it for them, that we embody it, and that we are learning right alongside them these skills so that they can see how it's lived. Because ultimately, it's not what we tell them, it's how we show up for them that it has its greatest impact. And I think this is an invitation to all mothers out there to really be very intentional about building your own, uh, you know, your tool, what I call your toolbox of skills that for the rest of our life, we are growing our skill after skill, after skill, after skill. So I think that's point number one, I'd say point number two is the importance of a never ending skill training. Uh, And what I mean by that is that we should constantly expand our mastery and growing of not just new skill set, but mastering skills that we might have, but we haven't mastered such as emotional command. I think that it's never an arrival, rather a constant evolution, because as we continue to, you know, grow through the many seasons in our life, we also need to grow our skill set that there's, you know, I might know how to, you know, talk to my toddler when I have two kids, but how do I talk to my toddler with, you know, six other kids talking to me and still make sure that I'm able to listen to him? I've got to up my skill set on boundaries on communicating effectively if I'm able to listen to my toddler. Anyways, my point in saying this is that we ought to see ourselves as that constant um, student. I think that's how I see myself and 
you know, I think that if you're open to constantly growing, then the idea of being a constant student gives you the freedom to feel like, well, you're not stuck and you can always grow your skill set. And what I love about skills is that it's um, a practical and it's something that is available to everyone. It's not, uh, it's not this sort of task that is, um, so big and so challenging because we want to speak about these micro skills. And I always tell, um, you know, the woman's school family and community that I want you to think about skills as virtues broken down in bite-sized pieces. It's there to help us become who we were created to be. And so this is ultimately here, seven skills that I'm just going to outline for you. And I think in inviting you to reconsider how equipped are you to equip your children in these your daughter specifically on these skill set. And if you're not, how are you developing your own skill set so you can give to your children these skills? Because lack of skills makes our life harder than what it ought to be. There's an unnecessary, I would say, uh, hardship when we just simply lack the skills, when we don't know how to build routine and we our life is in chaos. It's a simple tweak of a skill set that could revolutionize our peace of mind, even our homes. And so a skill kind of levels the playing field and makes it um, so practical. So that's what we're going to highlight today. So, all right, so what are these seven skills that I am intentionally training my daughter? I'm actually going to do a live video on this and how I sit down and train her on some of these concepts of kind of give you a window on it. And if you're interested, you just let us know. We'll hand that over to you. Um, but here, so here we go. So the seven skills are number one, how to protect their self-worth. Number two, how to teach them how to manage their emotion. Number three, teach them how to create a one page plan. And one page is a keyword. Uh, skill number four is how to hold themselves accountable. Skill number five is how to pivot from gossip with friends. Skill number six is how to build a daily routine. And number seven is how to manage their tone. Now, these are obviously, um, you know, I, um, itself a training, honestly, but what I'm going to just do here briefly is I'm just going to talk a little bit about each one of them and the importance of, of us knowing how to train our daughters in these skill sets. So here we go. Um, the, the first one, how to protect your daughter's self-worth. Okay. So with this skill, we, you know, our self-worth is unconditional. We are born knowing that we are born so valuable that every human person is valuable. The roadblock that we run into is that we don't know our value and our value is often revealed by the people and the environment that surrounds us when we were young. If growing up, we had to, we were loved when we got an A or we felt more appreciated when we had the nicer clothes, or when we acted perfectly and didn't fail, we felt more acknowledged, then we might grow up with the habitual pattern of thinking, well, I am my word, I'm, I'm only valuable if and when I have a straight A, because my mom actually loves it when I get straight A. I'm only valuable if I never make a mistake because my mom actually gets so mad at me when I make a mistake or my dad. And so we develop these habitual thinking patterns that our worth is um, only as good as what we can prove ourselves. So we want to be able to teach our children to really know that their worth is unconditional, regardless of other people's opinion of them, their grades, what their friends think of them, their parents' criticism, maybe the siblings' criticism, which is a massive, massive um, heartache for so many siblings and nobody talks about. It. It's actually one of the biggest things that people go in counseling for. Your failures don't define your worth, how you look, um, if you're doing something good or bad, the clothes or your body, um, if people like you, don't like you, if you win or lose in a game. And so teaching our children to know that their worth is unconditional and not conditional to these things and giving them sort of that visual is so key. And the way I'd, you know, I'd love to even, you know, is, is I love for, I love my daughter is to wire in her mindset, her unconditional worth and through neuroplasticity, where she knows nothing changes my, va my value. My worth is unconditional that no matter if I make a mistake, no matter if she makes a mistake or her grade or whatever, her value 
is unconditional. And I think that's a skill set because it's knowing that when these triggers come, she needs to be hyper aware of it and she needs to know what script she actually needs to um uh needs to tell her brain so that she knows, oh, you know what, my worth is not really conditional to what my friends think of me. So that's a really important skill set and that it gets drilled in their mind. The second skill is how to manage um, their emotion. Now, I tell my children all the time, your emotions come from your thoughts. So you have to know how to manage your thought and thoughts in order to manage your emotion. And <clears throat> you, you know, you have to be hyper aware when you spiral into um, a thought that's not helpful, but harmful for you. And so I actually give them this gesture where it's mind over heart, mind over heart. And I tell them to physically do it so that they know, okay, my thoughts are in command of my emotion and I can train my mind so that I can calm my emotion and so that they can have that gesture. And it's really phenomenal because phys the physical kind of uh, movement gets them into action and gets them to see, oh, okay, mind over my heart, right? And so step one, I tell them, well, you know, you have to give language to how you feel. You cannot just ignore how you feel. If you're upset about something, you try to figure out, okay, how do I feel? I, I asked him, I'm like, you know, Ina, can you tell me how you feel? Are you frustrated? Are you sad? Are you lonely? And so giving them a toolbox of words is really key. And then here's a script that I give them. I feel blank because blank. So you now you can give them a script that says, I feel this because somebody did this. Now they're giving language to actually their struggle. And I think that's important training for them to identify um, the word, but also the source. Okay. So that's step one is give language to how you feel. Step two is to seek the good in every situation. This is really seeking um, with eyes of, uh, I would say, finding the opportunity. So let whatever happens their way, it's like, what's the good in the situation? What's the good in the situation? And so the script that I teach them is what is this teaching me? So whatever situation they're in, what is teaching? What is this teaching me? And my kids are, you know, um, they don't always like it. They fight it. But if you give them a script, then it's wiring in their brain that whatever comes their way, they ought to seek the good in every situation because of what they can learn from it. Um, okay. Step three is recalibrate my reticular activator system, my RAS. So step three is, okay, I know how I feel. I can find the good in a situation. And then step three is um, I'm going to use that part of my brain called a reticular activator to actually expand on what I'm going to focus. So I'm going to focus now here on the good and what it's teaching me as opposed to the things that I cannot control. So the script that I tell them is now, you know, um, how, what, uh, how can I recalibrate my thoughts right now? So if my thoughts is so, you know, um, worried or concerned or thinking of what people are thinking, you can say, you know what, uh, other people's opinion of me is not my opinion of me, or um, I trust that there's a reason for the situation. So it's giving them um, an ability to know as a skill set that they actually can change what they focus on and it changes their emotion. Okay, step four is to take action into a solution. And really it's teaching them. And my kids always say, a moment of action, mom, a moment of action, even my seven-year-old, even though they don't exactly know what that means, but really to, to move them into action, because when we're frustrated about something and we're just upset about something, staying in that state will keep us in that state. And so movement, you know, movement creates and shifts our emotions. So just even saying, what's the solution? you know, what's the solution here? And so the script that I give them is life is happening for me. I'm a woman of solution. What's the solution? Okay. So um, skill number three uh, is how to create a plan. Now, you know, a plan is something so crucial in life and knowing how to write a plan is something that I wish we were taught in school. Now in the woman's school, we have a one page um, one page plan blueprint. We call it the one, four, five DJ, which is your one dream, four goals and five action plans. And it's really used all throughout our school. It's one of our most used um, formula. That's what we have in the woman's school is formulas. And, and you identify what you really want, you know, and, and my daughter actually was teaching her to do this and saying, um, okay, she was starting to get my, this is my 11 year old. She wanted to make money. So she had this little camp in our house, little as in 20 girls. And uh, she plan it start to finish. I showed her this one template and she's 11. So she said, okay, what's the one dream? Okay. I'm going to make 
you know, she really wanted to make money. She wanted to make, I don't know how it was a thousand dollars. She actually made $1,500 for this two week camp. And so what your four goals is I need to plan, um, you know, who the members are or who's going to help me. I need to plan the games. I need to make sure I've got all the materials and then the action plan. So the point is that she then uses one page and she can plan anything. And this one page would just give her almost a consolidated one page blueprint, whatever she does in her life. And it's all right there and she can tweak it. She can plan it for, um, you know, when she's in college, she can plan it for her own skill training. She can plan it for her own dreams. It's a very well used um formula in our school. All right. So the fourth one, the fourth skill is to help hold themselves accountable. And I think this is a thing that I'm noticing with so many uh, children and even including my own children is that it's very challenging to hold ourselves accountable. It's, you know, to take responsibility for ourselves and our behaviors and our action. And I think even though my children resist me, it's like, okay, I'm just going to keep fighting for them to develop this skill set and that they can learn the script of I hold myself accountable. So here's a quick step here. And I'm kind of going this fast, but step one would be, you know, you need to commit to a decision. What is it that you're trying to decide that you need to hold yourself accountable for? I commit to working every, every day or I commit to working out once a week, or I commit to eating no sugar, or I commit to speaking well of people, or I commit to making my bed, whatever that is, just needs to be, you need to make a decision. Now, step two is you have to honor your commitment, right? So if you have an accountability partner, if you're giving yourself, you know, a question every day is how am I honoring my commitment today? How am I honoring my commitment? So you just know, okay, I've got to do it. Right. Uh, so that you have a trigger that you teach them to know that it is that you have a commitment you need to follow through. And then step three is I, you know, keep, how do I keep going once I fail? So the idea is that they fail forward fast and learn from it. That's what we teach in the women's school. Um, and the script that we give them is I never give up. I never give up. I learn from my mistakes. So that's skill number four. I know I'm kind of going fast here, but I'm just giving you a little bit of the window. Obviously these trainings are, um, deeper than the women's school, but I, you know, I actually, one of our trainings, one of our classes, the last, I think one of the second to last class in the master class, I wrote probably 50 to 70 skills that I think our children ought to learn to um, protect themselves to a life of overwhelm and unfulfillment. And so this is just seven that I'm sharing with you that I think are really crucial. Okay. So skill number five is how to pivot from obviously um, gossip with negative friends. So here's uh, the importance of this is teaching our friends not to get into conversations that would exas exacerbate their, their capacity to um, think ill of people, to be anxious about things and to be part of almost, you know, being unkind and harming other women and giving them the thought process behind the importance of being able to pivot. So this, this skill is how to pivot. And when I say pivot, you're doing kind of a 180. That's what the pivot is. Um, from friends who gossip and I, you know, we can teach them to really learn the skill of protecting their mind from negativity so that they know you've got to protect your mind from negativity, you know, and so, you know, you've got to walk away from this, you've got to pivot yourself out of it. And so giving them that skill set to know, I'm not going to be part of things that are harmful. Now, the sooner we give this to them, the better it is, because then the sooner they're able to actually wire into the system before they even need it. All right. So step one really quickly is you have to be aware of the conversation. Is it, and the question is, is it helpful? Is it harmful? Is it negative or is it positive? Because awareness is the first prison we free ourselves from. And with, you know, without them being aware that, oh, you know what, this is actually not nice. Um, and I remember my daughter was telling me that one of her, two, two of her friends, she came back one day and she started crying. She's like, mom, all they do is talk about people. I can't stand it. I feel like I can't ever be myself because I feel like they're talking about me too. And it was, I was like, you know, I really congratulated her for the awareness that she had just by being aware that it was not a good thing. And so um, the script that we gave her is, is, gave her is, is this conversation helpful or harmful? Um, okay. So step number two is um, hold people accountable, which means that you are to reminding people to uphold what is right. What is good and what's good is not to speak ill of people um, unnecessarily. Sometimes we have to talk about our feelings and yes, but it has to be done with discretion and that's a skill in itself. So the script here is, I don't think this is helpful conversation. 
So we should not talk about it in this group setting. We should not talk about it in particular. We should address it to that person. So I, this, the script is, I don't think this is helpful conversation. We should blah, 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 whatever the solution would be in helping them even think of that. All right, step three would be to walk away. Learning to walk away is a very important skill set. They need to know when to walk away. They need to, they, sometimes it's physically walking away. Sometimes it's just being there and kind of, you know, I'm not listening to this and kind of saying, you know what, I just don't think this is right. I'm just going to, um, move away here, just pivot or move on the left chair. But to physically walk away gives them the competence and the confidence they need to say, I don't have to sit through conversations that I don't think will is the best of the other. And teaching them to do that teaches them courage. Um, and the script here is I protect myself from negative conversation. Um, skill number six is how to build a daily routine. I just think that routine and creating a rhythm of life is key to peace of mind. So I, you know, I'm adamant about training my children to develop their own routine. I know my kids, my older kids know how to write down their routine. And if it's not written, it's not sustainable. So writing it out is very important. And so I always kind of ask them to write out their routine. They fight me. Yes. To some days and that do it consistently. Yes, absolutely. But the idea is that I want them to learn how to write a routine. And I would say my three oldest are probably, we live with such a rhythm of life in our house, but but even above and beyond, I want them to write their own routine and teaching them how to do it. So step number one is identify the key parts of your day. Now in the Donovan home, we just identified this as something that is a new strategy we're actually implementing in our house, which is called the ego habits, the five ego habits and teaching our children to know these are your daily non-negotiable and that we need to make this part of our daily ego habits. And habit number one is prayer. Habit number two is study. Habit number three is nutrition. Habit number four is movement. Habit number five is skill building, which means prayer. When are you praying and how long are you praying, right? And you're always constantly analyzing that. What are you studying? Studying primarily on developing yourself, developing a, you know, a, a new um, mindset. So it's pertinent to growing yourself personally. Skill number three is nutrition, is that we're always trying to manage a healthy nutrition, whether it's drinking more water, whether that's what the, you know, your particular focus on, or maybe it's cutting out on sugar, but everybody should always manage their nutrition. And there should be something that we are focused on. I'm um, skill number, on a daily basis. Um, habit number five is movement. Are you, when are you, ex, what, what are, when are you exercising today? And how is that part of your day? Is it, can you only do three minutes? And that's fine. Can you only do 10 minutes or, you know, maybe 25 minutes? It all depends. But the idea is that every single day for the rest of your life, these are our five ego habits. Um, you know, my six-year-old, I just, start, my five-year-old started doing this with her where we do laps in the morning in the pool. We live in Florida, so it's a bit hot already at nine o'clock. And so she, even though she, you know, um, actually she, she surprised me because she was able to do 40 laps, you know, kind of one back and forth. But the idea is that she's developing that habit, even as a five-year-old to move and make that sort of part of our day. And I was working on that on accountability partners that you can, you know, my two girls are accountability partner with each other. And so just kind of even wiring that in our, in their system is so great. And skill number number five, I'm mean, having number five is skill building. What skill are you currently working on? Is it managing your tone? Is it, you know, making your bed? Is it speaking, um, enunciating, whatever this, but that it has to be part of our day is skill building. So those are the five things. Now, step two would be, um, teaching them to actually write their time blocks. I, you know, you, you just really model it for them and say, okay, what are your time blocks from five, whatever you wake up, maybe from seven to nine, this is when you do study, you wake up, you pray and, you know, maybe play with your siblings from nine to 12. What are you doing? So that it teaches them on a daily basis to have accounting on their time and their schedule. I think it's a great way to teach them uh, time responsibility at a very young age to just know how to write it themselves and they can write it on their own. They can they can go six to 9 a.m. And it's really um, them taking, I would say, um, responsibility for that. Uh, the script here is I honor my rhythm of life. And the more we honor our rhythm of life that we have set ourselves and we commit to it, the more I think we are uh, more fulfilled. And because we have planned our day out and we have identified, you know, the important things that we should, that are non-negotiable, uh, you know, with a routine, it doesn't mean that you never fall out of it. I always feel like the routine is there as your guidepost, but doesn't 
shouldn't be a cage. It should be a way to free you. And so that's why I teach my daughters is that it's just a way of being. It's just a way of life. There's a routine for us and what we do and that it's not should be constricting rather more freeing than is constricting and knowing, okay, dinner is between five and seven at the Donovan homes. You've got to be home by five uh, or five 30, uh, giving them that lee- leeway. They know that, you know, th- three, when they get home from school, three 30 to five 30, they can play outside and play with their friends. Um, and that they know from that they have to get up a certain time, the sleeping in is it not, something that Donovan do. that's what we say we can sleep in and we want to make sure they get enough sleep and they count their hours of sleep but it usually means they need to go to bed a little earlier and they're always like oh no mom they fight me <laughs> and it's real but the idea is that you know in the Donovan home we don't sleep in sleeping in is 8 30 on a Saturday that's our sleep in and everybody's different um and sort of learning to instill those habits now this works for us it doesn't mean it has to work for you I think everybody's different I'm sharing with you here what I do with my children but it doesn't mean that that has to what you have to do, but then you can harvest from it. And I think that's the idea here. Um, all right. So skill number seven is how to manage my tone. Um, my tone opens or shuts doors. I tell my daughters that all the time, your tonality right now is the reason why you're not going out with your friends. Your tonality right now is the reason why you're not able to, um, go with us, whatever it is, but our tone shuts and opens doors. So step number one is that, it's 7% words, 38% tonality, 55% body language. I really try to drill it in their mind. My children have written these scripts after scripts, and they want them to know that 7% of your words says you're not complaining, but you 38% of your body language is complaining all day long. So I feel like you're complaining and they kind of like, you know, just flinch, but that's the truth. And then they put it right back. I mean, they're like, mom, you're saying that you're sorry with your 7%, with your 38%, your 55% doesn't sound like it. So it really backfires, but you know, at the same time, you want them to have these skills and these deep level awareness. So the script here is I am aware of my 7, 30, and 55% and how it impacts uh, so that they're constantly hyper aware of not just their words, but every part of how they show up. And I think that's a great way to manage their friendship um, their career, who they find for the rest of their life, because it really um, creates an integration of how they're showing up, not just their words or their body language. So drilling that into their head, I think will be very useful and will open doors of opportunities for them. Uh, step two would be, I take responsibility in how I communicate my 35, I'm sorry, my 7, 38 and 55%. So that they know, okay, I am aware of it, but actually I'm also responsible. I can't just be aware of it and do nothing. I actually have to take responsibility. And the way I showed it to them is like, you know, there's three um, tonalities. You can just, I simplified it for them. You could be rough or gentle. You could be rude or kind. You could be whiny or grateful. And the difference between rough and rude would be rough would just be kind of like a strong, like, I don't like you, just kind of sharp, rude would be really intentionally hurting them. So you can make up your own, but the idea here is that they are responsible for their tone. And step three is I can retone when I make a mistake. That's, I think, important is that built in understanding that they can um, fail forward and that their failures don't define them. And so they can build these skills and they can be hyper aware of it. So um, the script here is, I'm sorry for my tone. Please forgive me. I will be mindful. My daughter uses, I'll be more mindful. Mom. I'll be more mindful. So uh, I think the, the, the key ingredient here is that by giving them these um, skills and scripts right now, they are equipped on how to make the decisions, how to pivot from decisions, how to hold other people accountable, how to hold themselves accountable, how to show up in the highest and best self. Because the only you know difference between a beautiful and meaningful life is their capacity to scale up to actually achieve it. I think that we are actually designed for it. And I just think that you know, the things that I wasn't given, I hope to be able to give to my children a little bit sooner to save them years of, of tears. And that way they can implement it. They can run with it and they can be equipped um, before they even need it. And I just think that so many children today are 
not trained with the practical skills that they need to actually live a beautiful, meaningful life. And so they are unfulfilled and then they get themselves into trouble because they just feel like there needs to be something bigger and they're just so stifled. So the skills that we give them, especially, you know, it's another skill I'm not talking about here, dreaming skill, which is so key, what we teach so heavily in the woman's school is so important so that they don't get themselves into trouble because what dreaming does, it gets them into doing something that is out, almost so impossible, so outside of them, so much bigger than them that it pulls them into that direction. And that's a skill in itself. So I hope that serves you. I'm really excited about I'm being very intentional about um, training my children and the skills I feel like took me years, if years and tears to acquire and that I would give them a head start in life so that they can make the best choices for their lives because they are skilled and equipped to do so. And so I hope that serves you what, you know, take what you can throw out what you don't. Uh, but regardless, I think the idea of building skill after skill um, in helping our children build those skill set is really what's going to give them confidence because confidence comes from competence, which requires a lot of skill building. I hope you have a great day. I'm grateful to be able to share a piece of my heart here with you. Go forth and conquer.